This is Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Mike Subaru. He is a member of the Riverside City Council. And so I'd like to speak with you about the drought. We are in Riverside. It's hot. It's dry. Riverside, though, is in a unique situation. I've been reading about this lately. While the State Water Board has mandated certain conservation targets, anywhere from 8 to 36 yes. percent, there is an exemption that if a community is truly, truly independent of other sources of water, if they mm -hmm. are solely self-reliant, they will not be subject to these reductions. Is that accurate? Yeah, to a degree, and it included surface water. Uh, originally, I believe it included groundwater, mm -hmm. but that was written out at the last minute. And if you're water independent and you've got four years or more supply and it's surface water, then they're asking for a 4% reduction. And you, meaning Riverside, met those four, three requirements. Yes, except that we get our water out of the ground that comes from the surface water that percolates down through. So the State Water Board has said you don't gain uh, the benefit of the exception. That's right. And so we're asking them to look into that and Well, to you're asking more than that. You're asking the courts to look into yeah. it. <laughs> and so talk to us about that because, look, I presume that Riverside wants to be part of the greater community of California. Absolutely. And support the entire region and state. But at a certain level, this is something that has been negotiated yes. for God since the 1800s. Yes. So where do you go with this? Well, you know, what we're trying to do is, is show the state, look, we, we've been water conservation minded for right. at least 15 years. We've had the rebates for the low, ultra low flow toilets, uh, the shower heads, you know, the faucets. We've had right. different programs that try to get everybody to conserve, conserve, conserve all the way down the line from 15 years back till now. So they're showing on the numbers that we've, you know, hit some of these 20 and 25% mm -hmm. goals over the last 15 years. So a lot of other communities have not done that, and Riverside has actually been a model that others have followed. Yet what's interesting is, for some communities who've been conserving, the conservation started, oh, let's say two, yeah. three, four years ago. Right. So they had significant conservation targets met, but the State Water Board set their targets at 2013 levels. Right. So many cities were already down, right. and yet now they're being forced to go down almost yeah. to places that they can't meet. And think about somebody that is a single person in an apartment, for instance, right. and you're saying, okay, you cut 20 some odd percent by low flow toilets, low flow this, you know, things were mandated with mm -hmm. codes that, you know, have taken that choice away actually. And now you're being asked to cut yet again, at some point in time, you know, what is there left to cut? And, and same with the homeowner that has medium yard, small yard, right. large yard. I mean, you know, it, you can only go so far and then it's and time to turn it down. And let's talk about the city of Riverside, which is known for large plots. Yes. Now, I do feel as if we're getting to a place where we don't frown at brown. Right. And so it's okay if our grasses are not green, but yes. they're brown. But still, I mean, you go to some of these lots in Riverside, they're very large. And so oh, yes. it becomes even more challenging to conserve. Yes. So how are your constituents handling this, especially your constituents? Because yeah. you, the plots in your area, some of them at least, are, are yes, pretty big. Yes, they're very large. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, well, go to another uh, part of a, another ward, yeah. Ward 5, is the Greenbelt. We right. mandated five-acre parcels right. in these, and we said you've got to maintain them and keep them nice and keep them green. But yet now we're telling them, now you got to do it with a whole lot less right. water. And, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting dilemma, to say the least. So, so how are you managing that dilemma? You know, right now we're asking people to cut back uh, to three-day-a-week watering. And, and let's talk about that, yeah. because recently I know that you're operating in good faith and you're trying to hit that 24% target, which the State Water Board yes. mandated while the lawsuit is pending. And so with your utility, I guess you recently passed some ordinances, an ordinance, which, like you said, cuts sprink uh, water sprinklers from four to three days a week? Yes. Um, and, and four was the temporary restriction right. during the past year because of the, the first onset of the drought sure. regulations. And then for the cooler months, two days a week? Yes. And so that's October to March. Well, that actually got changed at the last oh, minute. It? We ended up making it November 1st, but we're actually going to kind of wait and see because the argument, actually I made it, was <laughs> we have Santa Ana winds oftentimes at least right. the first two, three weeks in October. High, high winds, very dry, like 12% right. humidity, and sometimes 105 degree temperatures. So if you were fortunate enough to somehow limp your grass somewhat in shrubs right. and trees through the summer with the three day a week watering, if we had that condition in October, you're done. What about the odd even uh, restriction? That's been considered in some jurisdictions where yes. one would look at addresses. 
and so depending on how your address ended, right, with that's the day when, in the week. right, kind of like the odd even yeah. with the license plates. I was thinking that for the we're old enough to remember yes, the gas at, gas days back in the seventies, about seventy four with right. the embargo. I remember sitting in a car. Well, we mm -hmm. uh, actually that was presented by Riverside Public Utilities, and that was defeated on the last council meeting Why? to not have that. I argued that personally that mm -hmm. it was too complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're asking people to well, look at look at uh, VCRs. You know, you always right. saw twelve flashing all the time. <laughs> right. It's tough to reprogram the the uh, some of the uh, depending on the model sure. the the timers and to do a skip load of three times a week. And also, the argument is besides that, what if it rains on a certain day and your odd even falls in a way that it puts right, you back right, too many days? Yeah. You know, if we're trying to get people to conserve, don't put a burden around their neck, but at the same time, let them properly manage so that they can stack the days. So the let right me way. ask you do you have an enforcement mechanism? Yes, we do. Talk to and, me. About and what it. we've done is we've uh, dedicated a few extra folks to, you know, going out and responding to, you know, some of the different complaints. If they're free, they're going to be able to drive around and you know look around. They they, they got to make sure nobody's watering during the day. It's all mm -hmm. nighttime watering. Right. And then if they are watering at night, are they having sprinkler heads or is something mm -hmm. broken that's running off into the street? There's no runoff. But but, and I don't mean and the and the days of the week. Yeah, I don't mean to be critical, but look, this is Riverside, a city of over three hundred thousand. Three hundred seventeen. Right. A uh, large geographic area. Yes. Having a few extra folks, I don't know if that's going to do it. Yeah. And I just wonder, sir. I know you're not king for a day, but this is a crisis. Yes. And, and, and so is it time for Riverside, as an example of a major city in this state, to get firm? You know, places like Fresno, I mean, I think it was Fresno handed out the most warnings, uh, or most, actually, citations yeah. of any city in California in April 347. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot, but is it enough? Yeah, and we have some pretty stiff penalties. They start out at $100, the next one's 250 the next mm -hmm. one's 500 And but really a lot of... issuing penalties? Yes. You are. You yes. act, Riverside has issued penalties. They have issued penalties. And? Yeah, and I don't know the number offhand. That's I did okay. see a report. That's I think okay. it was in the teens. But that was on the, on the previous, mm -hmm. you know, the four-day-a-week thing. But most of what will happen is people are probably going to call in on neighbors that they see that are abusing things when mm -hmm. they're having to... Right. you know, cut back, and that's where the calls are going to come in at. But, you know, I, I started looking at the numbers myself, you know, 317,000 people, and you start looking at, you know, going out and watching somebody's timing and what days of the week, and well, I mean, even if you had be. 50 people, no, I know. It, it would be almost impossible. But look, obviously, yeah. it, we can't, it's impossible. Yeah. It's truly impossible, it unless really you had is. special meters, which right. I don't think we're there yet in no. Riverside. But still, if we don't get rains this winter, yeah. This is like apocalyptic almost, mm -hmm. and I, I don't think I'm being no. hyperbolic. It's, it's possible I mean, it this could is, pass over. This is apocalyptic. Yeah, they're 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 looking that we're at 85. Been watching I, yes, this for I know you and me both percent. for El Nino. Yes, and and all the indicators are there, and I believe the red crab that came to the surface recently. Oh, I don't is know an about indicator. this one. Tell yeah. the red... Apparently they they come up to the surface and they're floating around everywhere in certain is places that like the in groundhog? the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, so let's uh, hope and pray that we do see an yes. El Nino. And, and we had more rain this year than the previous yes. year. But let's talk about El Nino. Yeah. If there is an El Nino that's as significant as we think it could be. Yeah. Is Riverside able to capture the water that comes on? You know, the city? I, I don't think they'd be able to. I know that there is talk about putting in some rubber dams up along the Santa Ana River, but again, you've got Prado that has been holding water back right. for years that didn't, and the groundwater has come up significantly since 1969 when they had a basin plan. Uh -huh. And we've got Seven Oaks Dam that originally, up, way up against the mountains up in Mentone, originally was not designed to hold back water, but to keep floodwaters from coming through, they are now going to start damming up water. So a lot of things have changed, so there's gonna be a lot of other things in play. Bottom line is we haven't built any reservoirs other than Diamond Valley in the last 35, 40 years. And, and our population's doubled in and that time. So what can water we do? Water desalinization, this is the time to really start working on other sources of water to get us through these, these but what about arms. the El Nino? It's just, it's too soon? It is. If it happens? I think to be able to try to capture, although it will effectively hit the groundwater quite, quite, hopefully, uh, yeah, yeah, recharge. His name is Mike Subaru. He is a member of the Riverside City Council. We're in Riverside today. I'm Brad Pomerantz on Charter Local Edition.